right, today on the channel, we're gonna be taking a look at the entire Wave 1 series of figures of the Battletoads arcade line from Premium DNA Toys. Now, I pre-ordered these bad boys back in April of 2021, and here it is November 2023, and they're actually finally hitting customers' hands. So uh, definitely been a lot of uh, ups and downs as far as getting these out to customers, but I'm very excited to finally have these. I'm a huge Battletoads nerd, so uh, anxious to have this. Obviously, you know, back in the 90s, everything was trying to kind of rip off of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and create anthropomorphic creatures. And here we have Toads turned into uh, basically action heroes. But as you see on the packaging, we have, you know, call outs to the sprites from the arcade game. Came out in 1994, very fun beat em up. If you've never played it, definitely check them out. But we got almost all your favorite characters. As you can see, we clearly have a missing battle toad from the mix as we are missing Pimple. But we do have some awesome bosses. We do have some very cool accessories. Packaging wise, they all came in their own individual slip cover, which is nice. It had the corresponding battle toads logo or the mutant rat pack logo. Uh, but we got General Slaughter, who is ginormous, over 18 inches tall. This box alone is just gargantuan. We got General Vermin, we got Porca Pig, we got Rat Bones, and of course we have Zitz and Rash. All of them come with their own individual accessories and everything. Uh, they actually do have some color variants out there for the Rat Bones as well as the Porca Pig and General Vermin if you're interested in any of that kind of thing. Uh, and they actually do still have stock available as of the making of this video, but let me go ahead and get these out of the plastic prisons and we'll check out these figures up close and personal. And here we have all of our figures and as you can tell the scale is all over the place, but it is accurate to the arcade game. Uh, General Slaughter here standing over 18 inches tall, General Vermin over a foot tall. Our Battletoads of course, we got Rat Bones and we got Porca Pig. They all look phenomenal. They all are true to scale in coordinates to the arcade game. Um, just for reference, here's, you know, a Marvel Legends Spider-Man. And uh, yeah, he just looks uh, pretty dainty compared to everybody else. These are some big honking pieces of plastic. Let's go ahead and check out Rat Bones first. Looks great, has an articulated jaw, opens and closes. Um, he's got lots of different ball joints and pivots. Um, he's got two there in the spine, which makes him kind of a little wobbly here in the midsection. As you can see, he's kind of killing over just by me holding him at the, the hips. Loads and loads of articulation on these guys. Uh, the tail doesn't have a wire form or anything. It just has another, again, ball joint and a pivot there. Uh, you can rotate it, articulate it, point it up, point it down. Hips, same thing, up and out. Arms, bends at the elbow, bends at the wrist. Uh, no individual finger manipulation or anything like that, but... Stands on his own, looks great. Very, very good looking uh, paint weathering detail. He's not just a, you know, just single coat of white paint or anything. Got lots of different grays and black textures on there. Uh, he does come with three accessories, albeit all of them are the same. Um, basically you just get different color shields to go with rat bones. Nice hard plastic, hard plastic shell in the back there so don't break that off um, it's not like soft rubber or anything that's pliable it's very stiff rigid but you can go ahead and arm them up with any shield you like just like in the video game and next we'll look at porca pig very amazing as far as his paint application uh, the teeth may be hard to see under the lighting and everything but they got a nice gradation uh, from dingy yellow to some orange to a little bit of tints of red in there so it looks really really nice got the menacing expression a little bit of head play as far as articulation you can spin around look up and down just minimal but uh, shoulders are going to go up and out and around you got bends at the tricep as well as the bicep but i mean this guy's not really meant to be a super articulated figure uh, he does bend and swivel a little bit at the upper torso there and he does have bends at the knees uh, and hip rotation he is quite limber for uh, a big boy you can get those legs out but either way i mean he's essentially just gonna be like a baseball with legs um, even got the little soft tail here little piggy tail very very cool he doesn't come with any accessories but that is kind of true to form with the game he didn't really have anything he just kind of threw his arms out and jump on top and splash you and smack you around and hit you with a big belly uh, very very cool uh, he stands on his own which is great Something I should have mentioned on Rat Bones as well as all the figures. There are no peg holes at the bottom of any of these figures' feet. Um, so it's very important that they have some 
you know, good ability to stand on their own for display purposes. Next up, we'll go to Rash. This is basically the Battletoads answer to Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. You know, he's the super aggressive, cool one. Got the bandanas, got the glasses. Glasses are very, very cool. Like I said, everybody probably gravitates and picks him because he's got the cool glasses, the very 90s glasses with those, you know, triangular shapes. Right, we've got a nice little bullet belt. Goes around his midsection. Got the hard spikes for the knee pads. And now I start to understand why the said uh, 14 and up as far as the age range on these figures, because there's a lot of very sharp edges and points on uh, bits and pieces of this. There's a lot of soft plastic, but there's a lot of hard plastic and things like the, the points on the spikes on the shoulders. These, these will definitely put an eye out. So you don't want to hand these off to a kid unless you, uh, you really understand your kid's going to be responsible. But nice paint detail. Got the bright green, the darker green, kind of the camo uh, look to him. Again, that just grinning expression looks phenomenal. Good articulation. Does again feel loose at the hips slash the leg area. Very, very easy for him to kind of get bent over, but he is a very top heavy figure, as you can see with the super broad shoulders and the flatter legs. Again, no peg holes, so he does have a wide base, which is good, but again, with him being so top heavy, you may struggle a little bit to get him to pose and stand, but he can do it on his own. He does come with a lot of accessories, which is great. Uh, we have uh, one of my absolute favorites is uh, the spiked boot. So again, if you're familiar with the arcade game, a lot of the finishing blows that the Battletoads will hit are all independent and unique to one another, but they'll have very cool ways to kick the enemies off the screen and you know, it comes three-dimensionally at you. So you have the oversized spike boot. We also have the battle axe foot. You could technically put this on your hand, but in the game it's used to kick and slice with, so very, very, very cool. Then we have the giant spring uh, ball mace foot attachment as well. Again, has a single peg hole inside, pop off the foot, put it on there. It does have a little bit of a spring to it, which is neat. It is hard plastic, so I wouldn't wobble it too crazy much because you might snap it off, but it does have some play to it, which is very, very cool. And then if you order directly from Premium DNA, uh, you also get this oversized pimp hand slap as well. I don't think this is included from the other retailers. According to the website, this was an exclusive that you got if you ordered from Premium DNA directly, and that's what I did. So got this additional oversized hand. He does have additional interchangeable hands that are smaller. So we have two open gripping hands and then a couple more gripping hands that are slightly closed. But in comparison, this giant smacking hand here we have and then the normal accessorized hands. And next up we have Zitz. As you can see, skin tone wise, he has a darker paint job, more of a, a teal green. Same kind of Battletoads logo bullet belt around the waist. He's got the forearm gauntlets, the black hands, again, the spiked knee pads, and the super crazy expression with the eyes wide open, the teeth grinning crazy like. Uh, good stuff. Like I said, he's going to have the exact same uh, posability, maneuverability, and uh, issues that the Rash figure would have as far as getting to stand upright. He's very top heavy uh, and the legs are a little bit wobbly because of how much weight is up top versus how much weight is down below. But he does look great. It's easy to pose. I don't feel like the plastic is going to snap and break off anywhere. And of course, he does come with some other accessories. Again, if you order directly from Premium DNA, this is one of the bonus faces that you were supposed to get uh, that was exclusive to Premium DNA's website. Uh, it's just a different crazy expression, open mouth. There's no jaw articulation or anything like that. And as you can see, it's just really kind of a, a face shell. So you just pop one off, put the other one on, and be good to go. Then we have some interchangeable hands. Similar in nature to the ones we got with Rash, open gripping. Two more gripping ones, slightly closed. Then we have our finishing accessories. So we have the oversized spike fist, uh, comparison to a standard hand. 
So as you can see, ginormous, looks great. Very, very hard pointy spikes. Then we have our spiral arm that you could punch with. Very, very cool. And last but not least, the most egregious accessory, the double arm bulldozer thing. This thing is gi freaking enormous. I mean, just, it's almost the entire size of the figure itself, but you're gonna pop off both of his hands. There's two pegs here and there. And you'll put both of them in there and then he has a giant bulldozer finishing arm just I cannot believe they included this as an accessory. It's so over the top and things like that just make me so giddy when I see something that's just so ridiculous. So here we have General Vermin in all his one-eyed glory. Again, ginormous figure, but in comparison to what's standing behind him, he just looks silly. Uh, but you know, next to a battle toad, he dwarfs them in comparison. But that's the way it was in the video game. You know, he's a big baddie. And as with the rest of the figures in this line, he's extremely top heavy. Like I said, he's got that torso that's just 80% of the weight. Uh, the reach on this bad boy is incredible. Like his hands almost hang down to his ankles. Ginormous feet, so um, that is good for, you know, him being able to stand on his own and pose and things like that. Because as you can see, he wants to lean and uh, splay out on the table. But detail wise, great paint applications with the musculature and the, uh, the different shades of purple, giant hands. We got double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, ankle rotation, ginormous feet, massive nails. I mean, he looks absolutely incredible. Spinal column. These uh, spikes and points, like I mentioned earlier, very dangerous, very sharp. Uh, so don't, don't let the little kids play with this for sure because uh, General Vermin will take your eye out. He is massive, he is impressive, and I absolutely love him. He does come with some accessories. So we have his whip, spikes on the end. It's not a wire form or anything. It's very hard plastic. You really can't pose it anywhere. So this is what you get as far as uh, the aesthetic posing of it has the nice skeleton there on the handle, nice weathering detail on the grip as well. It comes with a wide open hand, no individual finger manipulation or anything like that. Uh, just up and down at the wrist joint there. And then he also has a secondary open hand. So you can get rid of his fist and his open gripping hand. So we also have some interchangeable heads. And at first glance, you might be looking and saying, uh, I don't really see much of a difference. And you're not entirely wrong. Uh, if I had to do things over, if I was premium DNA, I would definitely have added jaw articulation because there is none, unfortunately. Just solid piece on all of the heads. Jaw doesn't move at all, which is unfortunate. Um, and I would have gladly given up, you know, one of these heads or both of these heads to add some jaw articulation. I think that would have been fine. But this one, he's got a expression as if he's just been punched from the side. Uh, wide open eye, exposed, damaged eye right there. The other interchangeable head basically has a straightforward look that you're already getting right now. The only real difference is it has an eye patch. So to me, that's just kind of a, a waste. These expressions aren't necessarily um, too different from one another. Like I said, one's got an eye patch, one doesn't. One's got a slightly bent in jaw that's missing an eye patch. So uh, I think they definitely could have done better on that, but detail wise, I mean, they look great. It's just it's not enough variation for me to really feel like I got a good deal as far as differences on the figure. And last but not least is the giant big baddie himself, General Slaughter. Again, for scale and reference, here's a six inch Marvel Legends Spider-Man, absolutely dwarfed, only comes up to his kneecap. Same thing with Rash here, only comes up to his knee. I mean, this is an absurd toy for the sake of absurdity. Like, I can't even get it on camera. All you can see is the uh, bullhorn crotch of his wrestling gear. But uh, we got the, you know, the fishnet tights that he has kind of on his arms and his thighs from the video game. But he is just a gargantuan piece of plastic. Very hard plastic inside. But he does move and pose and, you know, bend at all the places. 
a uh, little harder to keep him upright, especially when you start getting his arms out because again, there's no peg holes and he's got those hooves, which are very small placements for it to hold all this body weight. But as you can see, I mean, he stands upright and he holds himself upright, which is really cool. He does have a couple interchangeable hands, some giant open gripping hands. And as you can see, they are massive. Like I can fit a battle toad inside of his hand. Uh, which is quite impressive. Looking at the detail, we got the scarring on the shoulder pads, which is great. The face expression, there's no jaw articulation or anything like that. Um, I would have loved to see that, but either way, the menacing grimace, the look on his face, uh, very impressive. He does have interchangeable faces as well. So we have this one off to the side. So we got the drool saliva coming out of the corners of the mouth. His horns are pointed forward. Here they're pointed upwards. Uh, the ears are changed as well. And of course we have his beaten expression. So he's got blood coming out of his ears, out of his mouth, drooling out of his chin, his lip and everything. Uh, his horns are cracked. So the battle toads have definitely done their damage. His ears are sliced open. So different expressions to change on him. All of them equally menacing. But as you can see, everything about this guy is massive. His wrist cuffs, his fist. I mean, this dude is just a giant, over 18 inches tall. Like I said, he just dwarfs the battle toads in comparison. But I mean, I love me some oversized, egregious, ginormous toys that, you know, no one else would ever make in a million years. I love that somebody did it and did it right. So good job, Premium DNA. Um, obviously we're missing Pimple. We need our other Battletoads hero. It's nice to have Rash and Zitz, but we need Pimple. We need Dark Queen. We need a couple others. So I'm anxious to see what the rest of Wave 2 is going to look like when that ever gets announced and when, uh, when that ever ships. Hopefully I don't have to wait a couple more years. Fortunately, you don't have to wait any because these are in stock now. So I would say if you're interested in picking these up, you can get while the getting's good. You can buy individual figures or you can buy the entire wave like I did. And I'll put product links down in the video description box below. But if you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.